figure out how to get a plane ticket out there. But I was on my way. And uh, I had planned to rent a car. I didn't even know you had to have a credit card to rent a car. I didn't have a credit card. Probably because I didn't have any credit. I didn't, I didn't have anything. And along the way, I, I realized what a bind I was in. And uh, I didn't know what to do. Well, my mother intervened. And so she called Sister Kraft, who called somebody that she knew that knew Brother Morton. And so I got the phone call. I'm in Salt Lake City at the airport changing over planes. And I called on the pay phone to see if anybody figured out what I could do. And so uh, my mother said, Sister Kraft gave me this number of this lady, and you need to call her. She's going to tell you what will happen. And I called that lady, and she said, Brother Morton is meeting you at the airport. I said, no, (laughs) ma'am. I said, he's got way too much going on at PSR for him to be coming to the airport for me. I mean, I'm from Mississippi. (laughs) No offense, Brother Bowling. (laughs) She said, oh, yes, he will. She said, he would love to. I came down that escalator, and there was Brother Morton standing there looking up. He came over and greeted me like I was the Friday night keynote preacher. Took me all over town, showed me stuff, showed me the church and this and that, and and, and got me a car. And I was nobody. And I'm telling you, I, I, I said then, I believe in Brother Morton. He, he'd, have to, he'd have to murder somebody and go to prison before I'd believe there's any bad thing in him. But it made an impression on me. And he's made an impression ever since. And uh, about 11 years ago, I think it was, that At Heritage, he preached uh, on that last night, I believe it was. And my oldest son got the Holy Ghost that night. I've got so many, many memories. I've heard him preach so many things that that I took to heart. So many, so many messages on prayer, on soul winning, on living it right. And this man's got a message this morning. Amen. He's going to tell us what we need to hear. I'm ready to hear it. Brother Martin, I love you. I appreciate you being here. Come preach the word. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Oh, let's lift our hands and worship the Lord. Let's give God the glory. Let's give God the praise. Oh, come on. Let's worship. Let's thank Him for what we've heard. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for this conference. Oh, let's thank the Lord. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Burgess. I hate to say this in front of all this congregation, but you never have given me back my credit card. You've been using it ever since. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. Praise God. Uh, it is so good. It is so good to be here in this youth conference. They say, if you want to feel young, run with young people. If you want to get old in a hurry, try to stay up with them. But my problem is I can't find any of them to stay up with me. That's my problem. <laughs> But it's good to be here with Bishop Johnson and and Pastor Burgess. It really is. And thank you for the invitation. And then I want to say thank you to Brother Jackson for obeying the Holy Ghost last night. That was, that was right. Praise God. Praise God. Then I especially want to say thank you to Brother Picklesheimer. Let me tell you. Brother Picklesheimer and I, sit down, sit down. Brother Picklesheimer and I this year have been friends for 53 years. 53 years. And 
We worked together for years in, in California. Then he went to Idaho, and we missed him. But I want to tell you about this good elder. He and I came in the church about the same time, not the same church. I was in Central California. He was in Southern California. But we got acquainted. We started our ministries together, pastored together, and uh, was worked together uh, in California. I want to tell you about this elder. He has never changed. He has never changed. In fact, he and I, he's about three years older than me. He and I, uh, like I said, have worked together. In fact, I've watched him over the years get stronger, not weaker, but stronger. Praise God. I thank God for Brother Pickle Simon. Thank you for obeying the Holy Ghost this morning. My old friend. Glory to all. Oh, let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Oh, let's worship the Lord. God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. It's good to be here with Brother Godair and Brother Moody. Thank God. These good, these good men. It really is. And I want you young men to learn something from this. you notice we're in no competition. We have preached together here and there and around the country together. There's never been any competition, any jealousy. We work together and we've got more done that way. Praise God. Don't start this competition stuff. All oh, us lift our hands and worship God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And God bless this local church and all the labor that you've put into this conference. God bless. It's good to be here with all of the brethren. I feel good. I feel good. I feel good in the Holy Ghost this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our text is found in Psalm 34 and 8, just the first portion of that psalm. Psalm 34 and 8. Psalm 34 and 8. It, it sounds good to hear those Bible pages being turned out there. I, I can't hear that electronic stuff. Now listen, you're listening to a different generation when you listen to us, fellas. Praise God. But the way we've done it, the way we've preached it, it's worked. It's got you young people to where you are. Hallelujah. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Let's worship God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I want to talk today about old time Pentecost. Old time Pentecost. Now let me tell you something. Uh, you say, well, there's an old elder and he's living in the past. Let me tell you something. I'm not living in the past. I'm living in the right now and I'm getting ready for the future. But let me say this. You need to know your history and you need to know some things of the way it was in the past. Uh, so you appreciate the presence. Oh, Hallelujah. I like that old song, it's real, it's real. I know it's real. This Pentecostal blessing, and I know, I know it's real. It's real, it's real. I know it's real. This Pentecostal blessing, and I know, I know it's real. Glory to God. You may be seated. Now, I'm not going to be taking all my time. I'm not going to take all my time here to tell you be seated. You, you can stand up as long as you want to, sit down as long as you want to. But anyway, 
I'm thinking of a portion of an old song. It said, uh, I like to talk about the good old days. It thrills me, I must confess. Walking to church down a country lane, about four or five miles, I guess, we'd get there early and we'd stay there late because the preacher would preach all day. Well, the good old days have come and gone, and I couldn't call them back if I tried, but the God, oh, oh Brother Picklesimer, Brother Jackson, uh, Brother Moody, ah, Brother Godair, the God that lived in the good old days is still walking right by our side. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, let's worship God. Hallelujah to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, I'm taking a drink of water, and I'm going to tell you why. It's not because I'm thirsty. It's because I'm fixing to build up steam. (laughs) Hallelujah. It's real. It's real. I know it's real. This Pentecostal blessing, and I know, I know it's real. And the God that lived in the good old days is still walking right by our side. Let me say this. One of these days, you young people, you're going to look back to this conference. And this is going to be the good old days. This is going, This will be the good old days. You'll be talking about... Oh, yeah, I was there in, see, that was 2015 it was. And Brother Godair was there, and Brother Jackson was there, and Brother Moody was there, and Brother Pickle Simon was there, and old Brother Morton. He's the only one that's still living. (laughs) Hey, Pentecost is fun. I said Pentecost is fun. (laughs) glory to God what I want you to get today young people is the spirit of Pentecost Uh, the, the text that I read oh taste and see that word taste makes me think of another word and it's flavor Pentecost has its own flavor when I think about tasting and I think about food and I think about flavor I think about my mama I do and I think about the way it used to be the cornbread oh this cornbread you get it Marie Cal that ain't cornbread I'm talking about the real stuff and pinto beans oh and colored greens Oh, and bacon gravy and biscuits. Oh, hallelujah. You talk about eating, that's eating. While well, the Cracker Barrel didn't have nothing on my mama. Hallelujah. And there was always some need at mama's house. Glory to God. And, uh, and so now let me tell you this. I was not born and raised in Pentecost. I didn't come into Pentecost till I was, well, just turning 16 years old. I didn't know anything. I believed in God. I didn't believe in the Trinity. I wasn't that dumb. But I believed in two. But I got straightened out on that. <laughs> Uh, and, and I didn't know you could have baptized me in the name of bubble gum and I thought it was all right. I didn't know anything. But, but I come into Pentecost and I was really involved in, in sports in the school. On the football team, the school football team, basketball team and track team. And I could tell you about that. But, but, but I was really involved in it. And let me tell you something, brother. Pickle Simon was really involved in it. He really was. But you know what? When we got the Holy Ghost and we started living for God, the preacher, the preacher didn't have to tell me, uh, now, brother, come on, you're going to have to give this stuff up. He preached against it. 
He taught against it, but he used wisdom with me. Now, I'll tell you what. One of the saints called me. One of the saints called me and said, you're going to have to quit that playing that football, basketball, and, that, and just start. It made me so mad, it made me want to go play football. And I think because that saint got out of their place. Let the preacher take care of the problem. Hey, and this, and this business of, and, and this business of a new convert comes in and then a saint gets on him and say, boy, the preacher's going to get you for wearing that dress. You better not wear, that's not right. You just get them in and win them to God and let the preacher take care of them. You make a book of bear out of the preacher. But anyway, I come into Pentecost and, 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 and I got the Holy Ghost, got baptized in Jesus' name. And here I am in the church and, 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 but God began to convict me. Young people, you gotta get some convictions. God began to convict me about sports and, and the things of, uh, of the world. And I remember I was standing in, uh, in the church one day, I hadn't been in the church a long time, and a couple of the saints were talking, and they were talking about the oneness of God. And, and this is a couple of adults, and I just standing there, and a teenage kid, 16 years old, and, and I was listening, but boy, I had the Holy Ghost talking in tongues, and woo, I was on fire, and, and, and they got talking about, I said, the oneness of God, what's that? And they begin to explain to me about the oneness of God. And I thought, oh, oh, what is this I have got into? And, 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 so, and so I got me a Bible. And now uh, in those days, this is, this is, I'm talking about old time Pentecost. This is, we had church every Sunday morning. We had Sunday school. We had morning worship. We went to a live uh, radio broadcast at 1 o'clock. Came back at 3 o'clock and had prayer meeting, and then come back at 6.30, had a youth service, and at 7.30, the main service started, and really, the preacher got on the floor, maybe 9, 9.15, or 9.30. And it was that we had church every Tuesday night, every Thursday night, and every Saturday night, and we had revival. Uh, uh, most of the time, uh, it would be six, uh, seven nights a week. That's right. Uh, uh, hey, this business of uh, uh, having uh, uh, three nights a week and calling revival, uh-uh. That's right. Bible said, forsaking not to sing yourselves together so much the more as you see the day approaching. Oh, we're having revival. We're just having it on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday. That ain't revival. That's just having normal church. Praise God. And so I got to sit now. Uh, remember, I was from an unsafe home. And my daddy would, uh, uh, I got to go, on, I, I made such a change in my life uh, that, that my folks got concerned about me. And so uh, my daddy would say, man, you've been going to church every night, every night, every night, every night, every night. He said, you're staying home tonight. And some of you in this generation say, well, I wouldn't have paid no attention to him. You would have, it was my daddy. Now, I ain't got time to explain that. In fact, we need to talk about old time. We need to get back some old time belt whipping. Yeah. I see these kids in our churches throw these little screaming fits, and mama just stand there and say, Y'all hush so I can preach. Hey, th listen. This, this business of time, I'm going to count to 10. You better quit. My daddy would knock me out and then count to 10. You better get up, boy. <laughs> hey, this time out stuff's a bunch of baloney. We, get to, we need to get back to some old-fashioned discipline. My land, you know what? I'm getting off the track here. I've been pastoring so long, I'm starting to pastor here today. All right, but anyway, uh, you know what I do? My daddy and mom would go to bed. 
I'd get me a flashlight and get me a Bible. And I'd get up in the bed and I'd pull the cover over my head. And I'd turn that flashlight and I would, sometimes I would read that Bible till the sun come up the next morning. That's true. And, but I remember one night about one or two o'clock in the morning, God, now hear me, revealed to me the oneness of God and Acts 238. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Now listen, you young people, you believe in oneness of God. You believe in Acts 238 because you've been preached to. You've been taught it. But you need to get a revelation for yourself. You need to get in that Bible and learn how to explain it for yourself. I'm telling you what. When I got that revelation, I threw that cover off. I jumped out in the middle of the floor. I went to woo, but I didn't want to wake daddy up or he'd give me something to woo about. I'm telling you, I got a revelation. And, and here I am, 75 years old. I was 16 then. It thrills me more today than it did then. I got a certain, I'm telling you, young people get a revelation of the oneness of God in Acts 2.38. Oh, I love this. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Come on, God, let a revelation of the oneness of God come to this place today. Hallelujah. Glory. Get it till it tingles way down in your, your soles and your toes. That's right. There's a certain feeling uh, that, that, that comes. The Bible, we need to learn it. That's right. We need to learn it, love it, and live it. Learn it, love it, and live it. Learn it, love it, and live it. Love that Bible. Get in that Bible. And, and, and I, now, this is what I taught when I pastored, and that is uh, uh, some folks want to get off and study false doctrine. Well, I want to be able to confront them. Uh, let me tell you something. You study the Bible. You study the truth. You don't have to study false doctrine. You get the truth in you, and brother, you'll have the answers. Get the Bible in you. Get the Bible in you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and, and uh, so here I am. I'm in the church. Didn't know anything about God or Pentecost or whatever. But boy, I was a love. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Oh, it tastes good. I'm going to tell you something. When you get this in you, th there's nothing else that tastes like this. I, I had a young lady that I was passing. Her family moved off and... And she got out of church and was out of church for many years. In fact, the sad story, she never got back in. But after many years, she called me and she, one day and she said, Oh, Brother Morton, she said, God's a dealing with me. I, and I told her what church goes. She said, Brother Morton, I went there. But she said, it ain't like it was back home. And that's a shame. That's a, when backsliders backslide and they come back to our church, they don't need to come back and say, boy, this ain't like it used to be. It ought to be just like it used to be. The same songs, the same standards. Glory to God. And uh, uh, I was there in the church and and, and, and I felt my call to the ministry, but I didn't go around and say, boy, I'm going to be a preacher. I didn't get me a big old Bible and say, I'm going to be a preacher. Hey, I'm, a, I'm going to be a preacher. I didn't tell nobody. I didn't say nothing to nobody. I just kept, but, but you know what us boys would do? There were several of us got the Holy Ghost at the same time. We'd go down on the street. you looking for a place to preach. We, we was looking for a place to preach. We'd go down on the street and stand on the street corner and preach. There was only one thing to preach. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. That's all we knew. (Laughter) 
somebody would strum the old guitar and we'd take turns to, we called it testifying but always a preaching and the Greyhound bus station was right around the corner and, and they, the bus driver would have to come around there and, and I know they tried to make them green lights every time because if they didn't they had to stop there and this is true, boy. They would stop there, and when they did, that bus would be up there. We'd say, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus. That's where we learned to preach, is on the street corner. Hey, I remember one time, I remember one, now listen, you think I'm just living in the past. I'm just telling you about the past. I'm living in the present and the future. And, and, and so it was that uh, one day I was out there preaching and the bartender come out. Boy, he come out of shaking his fist. Me, 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 me. I, ain't, I can't tell you what me, 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 me was, but. <laughs> and I just, I just, there he was. And I was just uh, preaching away. Pre- well, it was in the summertime. And it was uh, peach picking time in California. And we got canneries there in, in, in Modesto where I got the Holy Ghost. And, and they used to bring the peaches in in lugs and they'd always have a swamper with them well this uh one guy was driving that old cut down truck and another the swamper was sitting up on the peaches and he was eating the peach and i was a preaching away and that bartender mm, and i was like, oh, and he, mm. it was a deal you know what that swamper did that swamper took that peach that he hadn't finished eating and he throwed that peach And it didn't hit the bartender. It hit me right in the cedar end. I thought that was the Lord nudging me. Oh, boy, I really got with it. Hey, I like to talk about the good old days. It thrills me, I must confess. Walking to church down a country lane, about four or five miles, I guess. We'd get there early and we'd stay there late and the preacher would preach all day. The good old days have come and gone and I couldn't call them back if I tried. But the God that lived in the good old days is in this youth conference today. It's real, it's real, I know it's real. Glory to God. We used to sing that old song. Repent. Re out on the street. Repent. Re you can tell I can't sing. That's I learned how to sing out on the street, brother. You can't learn out there. But anyway, we'd sing that old song. Repent, repent, repent and be baptized. God is calling you. Thus he bids you do. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Repent, repent. I know this may sound corny to you. It may sound gargly to you. But this is where I came into Pentecost. Oh, taste and see. The Lord is good. Oh, taste and see. The Lord is good. Praise God. Well, I was in school. And and, uh, I got the revelation. And I was in gym class. I quit sports. But I said, oh, let me tell you this. Well, I was in gym class, and, and we wore these little red cut trunks and, and a white T-shirt. And I, we'd stand up against the wall, and they'd take roll. I looked around, and I thought, man, I don't feel like I got all my clothes on. The Holy Ghost will tell you some things. <laughs> That's right. And so I went to town. In those days, they didn't have all these jogging stuff like they got now. They just had gray sweatshirts and gray sweatpants. I got me some gray sweatshirts and gray, uh, yeah, pants. And, and I went out there and stood row. I was the only, no, there was a seemingly God boy. He done the same thing. And, uh, and uh, uh, they, but it didn't embarrass me. I was living for God. Yeah. And I had quit the track team. Well, the track team was practicing one day, and, and the coach came in the, uh, the gym class where I was at. He said, Morton, said, would you go out there and race them boys? I said, well, okay. And, and, and I had on these sweatpants and this gray sweatshirt and, and, and tennis shoes. 
and they had on their track shorts and their their track shoes and all that. And I remember, Runner C. Mark gets that bang. I took a out, run them. <laughs> out, I did. That really happened. The Holy Ghost got on board. I was used to running the aisles, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, taste and see. This tastes good today. This tastes good. Anyway, this young lady that called me and said, I tried that and it, it's not the same. I'm going to tell you, there's a certain taste to Pentecost. There's a certain feeling. You can walk into church. Now, let me tell you something. Just because you visit one of our churches, and it's a little different. Uh, families are different. And situations are different and whatever. But I'm talking about the basic. You know what I'm saying? You can walk into church, and if it's off, you can tell it just like that. Now, maybe there's somebody there that ain't doing it just exactly like you want it done. You need to get over that. It ain't going to be just exactly like you want it done. But I'm talking about the spirit of it and the feeling of it and the basis of it. Glory to God. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Well, anyway, I was in the church and I was working for, uh, for a brother that was in the church he was a septic tank contractor, and uh, we poured precast septic tanks, and we, uh, we had a yard where we poured them. I got to work one morning, and, and uh, they wasn't there. The crew wasn't there, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to pray. They, they ain't going to be here for a little while. I think I'll just pray. I crawled over in a septic tank. Now, you got to understand, it was a brand-new septic tank. Some of you don't even know what septic tanks is, and I ain't got time to explain it. But it ain't good. <laughs> and, 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 and I crawled over in that septic tank, and I was a praying. I was a talking in tongues. I was a shouting. Woo, man. Ooh, woo. And I had a feeling. You ever get a feeling? I got a feeling somebody is watching me. And honestly, I raised up. And I looked over that thing. I was on my knees and I could just see out. And there was, and he didn't have no business being there. That was the county inspector. His name was Bumgardner. And he had a cigar in his mouth. And he was off out there and he was a pacing back and forth. And I looked and I thought, oh my, there he, he ain't even supposed to be here. He's supposed to meet us at the job and inspect the tank. But he decided to come by there that morning. I just got up off my knees and crawled out. I said, good morning, Mr. Bumgarner. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Yeah, 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 I'm fine. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, take, you know what I was doing? I was eating breakfast in that septic tank. <laughs> Oh, taste and see, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Get a revelation of the goodness of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, I'll tell you something else. Uh, uh, here I was in school, and, and, uh, and I thought, I want to live for God. I want to do the right thing. I didn't know how to live for God. And so I, I was going back to school, and I thought the school was uh, the church was on the way to school. So I thought I'll stop by the church, and I walked. I went to the church, and I walked down them steps into the basement. I thought maybe that door will be unlocked, and it was. And I opened that door, and I heard something. I didn't only hear something; I felt something. It was my pastor, and he was sitting on the floor all cross-legged and he had his uh, handkerchief and he was rocking back and forth and he, I'll never forget his hat was sitting up here on his chair and he was a praying and he was a seeking God it was that kind of praying that you either had to get in and pray or get out of there and oh, I started praying. I started praying. And you know what? I started making that a habit. Uh, every morning when I go to school, I would stop by the church and pray. Young people, you got to pray. 
you got to get your Bible and you got to read it and you got to study it and you got to get a revelation. Pray that God will give you the spirit. Let's pray that God will give these young people the spirit of prayer and Bible reading. Come on, preachers, pray. Pray right now that the spirit of prayer and Bible reading would come to these young people. Oh, God, let the spirit of prayer and Bible reading come. Come, 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 come. Come to these young people. God, let the spirit of prayer and Bible reading come to these young people. Pray for them, church. Pray for them, pastors. Pray, 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 pray. Glory to God. Glory to God. Young people, you need to have a place and a time to pray every day. Hear me. You need to have a place and a time to pray every day. Every once in a while, something's going to happen. And, and, and you're not going to be able to do it. Uh, something will come up. But the next day, you get right back to it. I really believe the Bible said that Peter and John went up to the temple. They, they had a place. And they said, it, and what was it, 3 o'clock in the afternoon? They went up to, they had a time and a place to pray. Young people, let me tell you something. You've got to have a time and a place to pray. I know this is so basic today. Oh, I know that. Well, let's get to doing it. I pray that the spirit of prayer and Bible reading would get a hold of these young people. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, here I was. I was in the church. And, uh, and uh, I, I was in the church and, 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 and I felt my call to preach. And every once in a while they'd let me preach. Uh, bring a, a sermonette on Thursday night was youth night. And there was a preacher that asked my pastor if I could hold him a revival. I was 19 years old. Now, this is my story. This is my testimony. It works different with different folks. But uh, I'd been in the church four years, and, and, I, uh, and, and so my pastor said yes. And so I went to hold this revival, and... And I, it lasted four weeks. Can you imagine four weeks every night? Listen, I preached everything I knew and some things I didn't know. I mean, I was preached out. It, it'll make you pray. It'll make you scratch. It'll make you dig. It'll make you whatever. Well, it, we went to a fellowship meeting uh, it, during that revival. And, and they in those days, uh, they had my pastor happened to be it was a different part of California, but they had him preaching that night. So he was there. God was in it all. And, and, and so he, uh, he was there, and, and, one, and they had a youth service at 630, and, and they had me preach it. And uh, I still remember what I preached, Luke 18 and 1. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. And, 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 and so when I got through the pastor that I was preaching for, he jumped up in the congregation, and he said, Brother Vaughn's been preaching me a revival. Let's keep him busy. Okay. And so after that service, there was about five preachers came to me and asked me. To, I guess they talked to my pastor. I don't know. I didn't know what you're supposed to do in that day. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If you're in a local church, the first one that a neighboring pastor ought to talk to about you preaching for him is your pastor. And And... And if they ask you to come and preach for them, say, have you talked to my pastor? That's what you say. Have you talked to my pastor? Because I can't come till my pastor gives me the okay. And if you go talk to your pastor and he says, no, you better not do it. That's it. That's the end. You just believe that. He knows what's best. <laughs> Praise God. And I'm going to tell you something. If there's somebody in the neighboring church that said, come on over to my place, they're not your friend. You don't want that kind of a pastor for your pastor. That's unethical. Praise God. Anyway, anyway, we went home. My pastor preached that night. We went home. And that was in November. He said, let me tell you, come December. He said, why don't you go preach those revivals? And when you get through, come home. And so that's what I did. 
It's 55 years later and I ain't got through yet. I ain't got back home yet. But that's the way God opened the door for me. Just relax, young man. Just relax. In God's time, in God's way, in God's will, uh, it'll all open for you and work out for you. Well, how did I get off on that? But anyway, here I was. I was now I'm 20 years old. I'm 20 years old. And, and we're having a uh, youth camp in California. I'd never been to a youth camp in my life. Uh, when I got out of school in the summer, I had to work. And uh, uh, is at the old Fraser Park campground. Brother, uh, brother, brother Goldair's been there. Brother Picklesheimer's been there. Now, one of, the old tabernacle, it was a dirt floor with sawdust on it. They had it slanted like that. And it was a dirt floor with sawdust on it. Well, anyway, they was going to have the youth camp. And uh, I, was, I was evangelizing. My pastor gave me permission to go evangelizing. Well, they, something happened. I don't know what happened, but the, 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 camp, the camp speaker couldn't come. And so they said, Brother Morton, will, can you preach a youth camp? Yeah, you know, I, I've never been to one. but. <laughs> and so I went, and this is the truth. This is the truth. God moved in such a way. Now, that was, that was right in and right at the end of all this ladder splatter stuff. If you don't know what ladder splatter is, I ain't got time to explain it. It ain't good. But let me tell you, ladder splatter is still around. It's just the same old gal dressed up in a different dress. Yeah. And so the God moved in such a way that some of the elders of the uh, of California, they came to see what this all about. What's that young man doing? What's happening down up there at that camp meeting? And God is my witness. Sixty-four brand new young people got the Holy Ghost. Sixty-four got the Holy Ghost. Hey, hey, hey! You must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. Okay, this is what happened in that youth. There was a tree, a big old oak tree out in the middle of a field. And, 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 and young people went out there and started praying and started getting the Holy Ghost under that oak tree. This is the truth. In the dining hall one day at lunchtime, God got to moving and somebody got the Holy Ghost in the dining hall. I ain't through yet. This is going to be unbelievable. They were out playing volleyball. And the Spirit came on a girl and she got to praying and got the baptism of the Holy Ghost playing volleyball. I'm talking about old time Pentecost. I'm talking about the glory coming down. I'm telling you the truth. Oh, taste and see, the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see, the Lord is good. It's real, it's real. I know it's real. This Pentecostal blessing and I know, I know it's real. Oh, let's stand to our feet, lift our hands, and worship God. Glory to God in Jesus' name. Let's praise the Lord. Oh, let's praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Glory to God. Remain standing. I'm quitting, maybe. And, uh, and let me tell you something. Brother Mooney's right. This music, I'm telling you what, we need to get back uh, to what a gathering of the faithful that will be. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Back to some of these old songs. Some of this stuff they're singing, I can't worship with it. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. But I'm going to tell you something. It wouldn't be right to close this meeting today without reading this because this takes us back to old time Pentecost. What I want you to do today, what my goal was to, I want you to get the flavor, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Get the flavor, the, the real apostolic Jesus name, one God, tongue talking flavor is in this place. It's in this place. It's in this place. Thank God it's in this place. That flavor's in this place. 
that old apostolic uh, feeling is in this place. Uh, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Glory to God. Let me say this. I don't know how long it's been since you prayed through. I don't care if you prayed through and talked in tongues last night. We need to do it again today. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done. But according to his mercy has saved us by washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Everybody in this place needs to get a renewing of the Holy Ghost. Everybody in this place, from the pulpit to the pew, from the preacher to the youth, everybody needs to talk in tongues. Everybody needs a renewing and a refilling of the Holy Ghost. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, let's worship God. Sing it. It's pretty close to blessing and I know, I know it's real. It's real. It's real. I know it's real. It's pretty close to blessing and I know, I know it's real. Sing it, everybody. It's real. It's real. I know it's real. It's pretty close to blessing and I know, I know it's real. I said it's real. Holy Ghost time. Hallelujah. It's all to service. Holy Ghost time. Get a hold of God. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you can get it today. You can get it today. You might need a refilling. You can get it today, right now. Something that'll keep you. Ooh, hallelujah. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Jesus, Jesus. God, have your way in this place right now. Have your way in this place right now. All over this building, God, let your glory fall. Somebody.
pray it down. There are groups that brought people needing the Holy Ghost are needing a refilling. You got to be a part of it. Pray the glory down. That's all time Pentecost. Pray the glory in this place. Hallelujah, let a wave of glory sweep in this place. God, let a wave of glory sweep over this all. My God, my God, my God, my God. Falling in this place. It's falling in this place. Come on. Let God have an old fashioned Pentecostal move of God. Have your way right now, Jesus. Have your way right now, Jesus. Have your way right now. 